Brittany. I'm Luke. And I'm Whitney. And today we're going to show you how to perform different operating budgets for a product. Today, Brittany, Luke, and I are going to show you how to budget for a product. For our project, we had to choose a product that we would budget, and we chose the muffins from Costco. And for the project, we had to buy these muffins, repackage them, and sell them, and see if we made a profit or a loss. And after we bought these muffins from Costco for, we bought 12 muffins for a total of $6.79, we decided to resell them for $1.25 each. And this is a really good deal. Costco's selling 12 muffins for this price. That's about around 60 cents per muffin. So we were definitely marking our price up so that we would make a profit. And there's a lot of calculations we had to figure out for our prod project. And one of them was the amount of time it took driving from our packaging location to Costco. And we also had to go to Walmart to get our packaging supplies for our muffins, which was cellophane and ribbon to wrap them in. And it took a total time of driving and shopping um, of 40 minutes. And our goal for this project was to try to sell 102 muffins a month. And we did our project over the months of March, April, and May. And we sold these muffins at a sporting event four Fridays a month. So for our project, the first thing we had to calculate was the sales budget. And we calculated the sales budget for the months that we sold the muffins, which was March, April, and May, and then we calculated the quarter, which is the total for all three months. To calculate unit sales for the sales budget, we took 102, which was our goal of sold muffins per month, divided by the units, which was six muffins per package. Then to calculate the unit selling price, which is $7.50, we took the, the selling price for the muffins, which was $1.25 each, times the number of muffins in a package, which is six. And then if you multiply these two numbers, 17 and 750, you'll get the total sales revenue, which is $127.50. And then for the quarter, you just add up at the very end of the unit sales, you add up the three months to get your total for the quarter. The selling price remains the same, so you don't change it. And for the total sales revenue, then you add up the total sales for the three months to get your quarterly. Okay, so now, from the information that Whitney has given us, I'm going to show you how to do the direct materials budget for muffins. We're going to start with units to be produced, which is 17, and we got that from the sales budget that Whitney produced. And we're going to keep that the same, because that's how much we want to sell per month. So we're just going to go ahead and carry that out through each month. Next, we're going to do quantity of direct materials needed. We're going, we got the six because that's one unit equals six muffins, because there's two in a package, so it's gonna be six muffins. So then next what we're going to do is multiply the 17 by six, and that we get 102, and that will be your quantity needed for production. Now we're gonna do the desired end inventory, which we have to go to the next month. So we're already gonna have this information done. We have 102. We need to do 102 times 10%, the 10% we got from the book it was given to us, and it's the percent of sales that we want to keep on hand. So we have the 102, then we need to add the 10.2 that we got from the 10%, which is going to equal 112.2, and that is going to be your total quantity needed. Next is your beginning inventory of direct materials. We start with zero because we're obviously not going to have any materials on hand already. So then we just subtract that, and that's going to give us 112.20. And then next, we're going to multiply the cost per unit. Now the cost per unit we got is by $6.79, and that's the cost of the two packages. And then we're going to divide that by two. Next, so that gives us $3.40. Then we're going to times that by six, because in one unit there's six muffins. So that's going to give us our 0 0.57. So that goes up here. So we're going to multiply that, and that's going to give us 63.95. That will be our March total cost of direct material purchases. Next, we'll move on to April, and we'll already have this done up until the desired end inventory. We're going to do the same exact thing, so we're going to move to May, and then we're going to want to do the 17 times 6 to get our 102. Then we want to do 10% of the 102 because it was already given, so then that gives us 10.2. Then we're going to add that again. It's going to give us 112.2. And then what we're going to do here to get our beginning inventory of direct materials, we need to carry down our desired ending inventory. 
So you carry that down from the previous month. Then what you're going to do is subtract that from the 112, which is going to give you 102. Then our 57 cents is going to carry over because it's going to stay the same. So now we're moving on to May. May, we're going to have the same exact thing happen here. So we have 17 times 6 is going to give us 102. We're going to get this 10.2 from June. Now the reason the rest of this isn't finished is because we just need this to find out our desired end inventory. So then we're going to have the 102 plus the 10.2, which is going to give us 112.2. Then we're going to carry our other 10.2 from April down here to our beginning inventory of direct materials. Now we're going to subtract that from 112.2 to get our 102. Then we're going to multiply that for our 57 because it's our fixed, it's going to stay the same. So we're going to multiply that and that's going to give us our 58.14. Okay, so now moving on to the quarter to find um, our quarters used units to be produced, sorry. We're going to do March, April, and May. Remember, June is a minute, so we're not going to add that into there. So it's going to be the 17 times 3, which is 51. Our quantity of direct materials needed is going to stay the same. So that's going to be 306. Then for the desired end inventory, that's going to be carried over from our last month that we did. So the 102 is going to drag over, I mean, sorry, 10.2 is going to drag over. And then that's going to give us 316.2. Then to get the zero, we go back to the beginning of our quarter, which is March. We go to beginning inventory and direct materials. And then we're going to take that and put it right there. Then from there, that's going to give us 316.2. Then we're going to multiply that by the 57 cents, because that's going to stay the same as well. So we're going to multiply that, and that's going to give 180.23, which is our total cost of direct purchases for the quarter. Now we're going to do the direct labor budget. Again, we're going to start with units to be produced, which is going to be the same as our last budget. And that's going to be 17 throughout. So March, April, May is going to be 17. Next, we're going to do direct labor hours per unit. So that takes a little bit of calculating, so we're going to go right over here. We calculate that we're going to have 12 hours of selling a month. Then we're going to have one hour and 42 minutes of packaging our product. So that one hour and 42 minutes equals 1.7 hours. So then our total labor hours are gonna be 13.7 a month, because that's the 12.17. Then we're gonna take that 13.7 and divide it by 102, because that's the number of muffins that we wanna sell per month. So that's going to give us 0.13 per muffin. Then we're gonna take that 0.13 and multiply that by six, because there's six in one package six muffins in one package, which is going to give us the 0.78 labor hours per unit. So then going back over here, we're going to take that 0.78, and we're going to multiply that by the 17, which is going to give us 13.26. Next, we're going to move on to direct labor costs per hour. We decided that we're going to be paid $5 for every hour that we work, so that's going to stay the same. So we have the five all the way across. So we're going to take the five and multiply that by the 13.26, which is going to give us a 66.30. Next, we're going to move on to April, and we're going to basically do the same exact thing. We're going to do the 17 times the 0 0.78, because that's going to stay the same. Again, that's going to give us 13.26. Then we're going to move on to direct labor costs, and again, that's going to give us 5, because that's going to be staying the same as well, and that will give us 66.30. We're going to do the same exact thing for May, and then we're going to have the same exact numbers. Now we're going to move on to the quarter, which we're just going to add the three months together to get our units to be produced for the quarter, which is going to give us 51. We're going to carry the 0.78 over, and then that's going to give us 39.78. Then again for the quarter, we're going to carry the 5 over, and that's going to give us 198.90 for our total direct labor costs.